Hello Cardboard Lovers, it's Cardboard Badger here. I hope you're doing well and today we have for you a brand new deck tech. We have a budget EDH deck for you coming in at £25 or $33 depending on where you're from. Um, all the details on how this actually came about I will put in the description below alongside all the links where if you would like more Cardboard Badger in your life you'll be able to find us there. So we are going to be introducing you to the Commander followed by the themes and ideas, what this deck is going to be doing, and then we will go through the creatures, the non-creature spells, and finally we will go through the mana base. Introducing our commander then, we have got Utropia, the twice favoured. For three mana, one green and a blue, we have a 2-2 human wizard with constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains flying until the end of turn. So the ideas and themes for this deck was to produce a water-based, merfolk kind of tribal deck that was going to enable us to get our creatures with a lot of evasion pumped up with the selection of enchantments that we've got, making them fly, making them bigger, and going in for the win. A huge amount of fun, and also the chance to be able to play cards that we might not normally play with because we are on a budget. Up next we have our 25 creatures starting off with the Roots Water Shaman. You may play creature enchantments whenever you could play an instant. Uh, we also have a lot of evasion enablers uh, including Steambed Aquatex. This is going to enable Island Walk and also plus one plus one to our target merfolks. We also have Merfolk Sovereign giving other merfolk plus one plus one and also tap this and have target merfolk be unblockable till end of turn. We've got Mero Levitator tapping this and giving a creature flying. Also Tidal Warrior where we can tap and have a target land become an island to enable our island walk. And we also have Root Water Diver. We can tap and sack this and we can return an artifact from our graveyard. To support card draw, we're going to be playing Tatiova, Beneath Druid. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. And also, we're going to be playing Seafloor Oracle. Whenever a merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Other merfolk to help sneak through our opponent's defence for damage and card draw include Mistfolk Herald. It can't be blocked. We've got Deep Tread Mero for one blue mana. It gains Island Walk till the end of turn. We have Master of the Pearl Trident, giving all other merfolk creatures you control plus one, plus one, and they all have Island Walk. And to look after our merfolk, we have Kopala, Warden of the Waves, which is going to enable spells your opponents cast the target merfolk you control to cost two more, and also two more for activated abilities. We're also running a selection of creatures that care a lot about plus one, plus one counters. Uh, including Deep Root Elite. Uh, whenever another merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on target merfolk you control. Also Deep Root Champion. When you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on Deep Root Champion. We've got Merfolk Skydiver. It comes in, you can put a plus one plus one counter on the target creature, but for five mana it also gives you the chance of proliferate. We've got Merfolk Branch Walker that will explore also Combine Guild Mage as well, enabling us to put more plus one counters on and also move them around onto other creatures that might be a bit smaller. And we also have Forerunner of the Heralds. We're also going to be playing Talarand, Sky Summoner. Uh, when we cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying. So we've got some blockers. We're also playing Calafe, Beloved of the Sea. This is going to enable our opponent's targeted spells to cost one more mana. Also Harbinger of Tides, so we can return an opponent's tap creature back to hand. Also Swift Warden with Flash, giving one of our merfolk hexproof till the end of turn. And also Jungleborn Pioneer, a merfolk scout. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 blue merfolk creature token with hexproof which is going to enable an additional ETB. And our final two creatures, and they're not merfolk. We have got Whitewater Naiads, 
a nymph. It's got constellations, so whenever White Water Naiad or another enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target creature can't be blocked this turn. And finally, we have got Deep Sea Kraken. 6-6 six, six, Kraken for 10. Um, it can't be blocked, which is great, and it's got Suspend 9. Whenever opponent casts a spell, if Deep Sea Kraken is suspended, remove a time counter from it. And those are our 25 creatures. Up next we have our non-creature spells. We're going to start off with the most important enchantments because that is what Utropia the Twice Favoured wants. We want to play loads of them. We've got 18 in the deck and every time we play one we're going to be putting a plus one plus one counter on one of our creatures and obviously to the end of turn we're going to be giving it flying. And we're going to be starting off with the most important one because it is our alternative win con. We've got Simic Ascendancy. When you place one or more plus one plus one counters on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. So to support that, we have got Hydra's Growth. When Hydra's Growth enters the battlefield, we put a plus one plus one counter on Enchanted Creature. And at the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of counters on Enchanted Creature, getting towards Simic Ascendancy extra fast. And also, we've got a retreat to Kazandu, a landfall trigger. Every time we play a land, if this is out, we can gain two life if we need it, or we can put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. Next, we have enchantments that care about lands. We have Psychic Venom. Whenever target land becomes tapped, Psychic Venom deals two damage to that land's controller. We also have Chronic Flooding. Whenever Enchanted Land becomes tapped, its controller puts the top three cards of his or her library into their graveyard. And for our side of the lands, we have Abundant Growth. When Abundant Growth enters the battlefield, we draw a card and also we can tap and add one mana of any colour to our mana pool. Enchanting our opponent's stuff to hinder them, we have Betrayal. Playing this on a creature and opponent controls, if Enchanted Creature becomes tapped, we draw a card. We've also got Backfire. Backfire dealing one damage to target creature's controller for each one damage dealt to you by that creature. And also in Crust, enchanting an artifact or creature, an enchanted permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step and its activated abilities can't be activated. For card draw, we are playing Bread for the Hunt. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it deals combat damage to a player, which should be most of our merfolk, and obviously a lot of them can have evasion, um, we will draw a card. Also, Alexis Cloak, Enchanted Creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. We also have Traveller's Cloak, Enchanted Creature has Island Walk of the Chosen Type, and when it comes into play, also draw a card. And also, we have got Starlit Mantle. When Starlit Mantle enters the battlefield, Enchanted Creature gains Hexproof till end of turn. It's got Flash, and it also gives our Enchanted Creature plus one, plus one. We have Strength from the Fallen. An enchantment that's going to pump up one of our creatures every time we play an enchantment, dependent on how many creatures are in the graveyard. We've got Mantle of the Webs. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus three, and has reach. Cartouche of Knowledge. It's going to get plus one, plus one, and flying, and we get the chance to draw a card. And also we have Downdraft. An enchantment that can just sit there, and for one green mana, we can have a target creature lose flying until the end of turn. And our final enchantment, Deep Root Waters. Whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, which is the majority of our creatures, we are going to create a 1-1 blue Merfolk creature token with Hexproof. So this is obviously going to make lots and lots and lots of additional ETB triggers. Now we've finished with all the enchantments, we're going to go through the remainder of the non-creature spell cards. We are going to go with Growth Spiral and Cultivate. For some mana fixing and ramp, we we'll also have Broken Bond, destroying target artifact or enchantment, and being able to put a land from our hand onto the battlefield. And to replay some of our cards later on, we have got Guy's Blessing. Target player shuffles up to three target cards from their graveyard into their library. Draw a card. And for returning, tapping and flickering, we've got Engulf the Shore, returning to their owner's hands, all creatures with toughness less or equal than the number of islands you control. We've got Sleep, and we also have Vence's Diffusion. 
returning target non-land permanent or suspended card to the owner's hand. In addition to that, we've got Unsummon and also Essence Flux. We also have Artful Dodge. Target creature is unblockable this turn and it has flashback. We have Aquatex Will, putting a flood counter on a target land, and that land is now an island if we happen to have a merfolk. We also draw a card, so another way of enabling island walk. We have Simic Charm. And we also have Reality Shift. Exiling target creature. We also have Negate. Cancel. And we also have a Fog. And our final three cards before we get into the mana base. We've got some artifacts. We've got Nurok Stealth Suit. A quick creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. And for two blue mana, we can attach the stealth suit to target creature you control. We also have Inquisitor's Flail. If a quick creature would deal combat damage, it deals double that damage instead. And also Loxodon Warhammer. A quick creature getting plus three, plus O, oh, and has Trample and Lifelink. And finally, we have our mana base. We have 37 lands in total. We have Evolving Wilds. Terramorphic Expanse also allowing us to sack it and go and look for something else. Blighted Woodland, Thornwood Falls for a jewel, and also Simic Guildgate. In addition to that, we're going to be playing 22 islands and 10 forests. So there we have it. That is the entire budget EDH deck, Flying Fish. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have done so, please let us know in the comments below. And also, if you would like additional budget deck techs please let us know would you prefer boros to be the next deck tech or the most recent one i have built the esper deck um, pop it in the comments and obviously whichever is the most popular that will be the next one that i do for the channel um, other than that i'd just like to say thank you so so much for watching and we will see you again soon here on cardboard badger